Welcome back to my dark room. Today we're going to be making these into these. We're going to make contact sheets. Welcome to the Naked Photographer, where I'll be exposing myself. No, 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 I won't. Mm -mm. That's not better in my head. Okay, we're at my enlarger. I have a contact proofer here. It's not necessary that you use one. It's basically just a piece of foam rubber and a heavy, thick piece of glass. You can use that, um, okay, piece of craft foam, uh, piece of cheap foam rubber, and just a thick piece of glass. Contact proofer just makes it simple. It keeps it all together nice and neat. My enlarger has a cooling fan. When it's on, it's going to make a lot of fan noise. You're going to pick that up on the video. Um, and when we move to the sink, you're going to hear a lot of running water noise. I'll try to do my best to speak over it uh, and keep it off as much as possible. The basic procedure here, piece of photographic paper, which I'm using Ilford Warm Tone uh, Fiber Base. It's going to go on the uh, contact proofer, emulsion up towards the lens. My lens is set at f8, which is about where I like to print. Film will go on top of the paper, glass presses down, and then I'm going to take the large piece of, of craft foam that I have here. A uh, black piece of card will work just as fine. And I'm going to cover all but one strip of the film and expose it for two seconds. And then I'm going to move it down, expose another two, move it down, another two, so on and so on until I get the entire piece of paper exposed. Uh, that will give me what's called a uh, test strip. I'm not going to use an entire sheet of paper for this. You can, but I'm not going to be wasteful. I'm just going to cut it in half. That will allow me to see what this looks like in two second increments. So I'll have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and fourteen second exposure times. And I can judge which one is the best for a contact sheet. I'm not going to be using any kind of contrast filter. Since this is just pure white light, it will give me a contrast similar to a number two filter, which is um, the, the middle, the median filter to use. The basic procedure that I'm following is more or less what you'll find in Kodak publication AJ3, which I'll link to in the description. And that covers how to develop film, how to make a contact sheet, and how to make a basic print. So previous video, how to process film, how to develop film, also followed Kodak AJ-3. So let's turn the lights out, get a piece of paper in here and expose it. Now before I get the piece of paper out, uh, I'm going to turn the light on so you can see that I've got a pool of light around my contact proofer. I went ahead and focused it so that the edges are sharp. This will give me a nice even area of light. I'm sure that the whole piece of paper will be in it and um, I'm not going to have half of my contact sheet accidentally in the dark and unexposed. I'll turn that off. Get a piece of paper out of the box. And let's put that in motion side up. Film will go in motion side down and just press it into the glass. All right, now I'm going to take my foam and you can do this one of two ways. You can um, slowly expose the whole paper one strip at a time or you can start with a full sheet of paper and cover it up one step at a time. Either way works, whatever works best for you. So I've got my timer set for two seconds. Two seconds is based on my own experience with my enlarger. It's a fairly bright enlarger. If yours is darker, 
you may find that a three second increment looks better, or maybe even a five second increment. Uh, do a couple of test trips, go find out. If the whole test trip is too light, make it a longer increment of time. So I want to cover all but one strip. Move it down to another, expose again. Move it down to another. And just complete the entire sheet. We'll turn that off for now, and let's get the paper out. I am going to put on my gloves, because I do not use tongs when I process. So I'm using Kodak Dectol Developer mixed one to two. That's one part developer, two parts water. A um, acetic indicator stop bath, and then Kodak Fixer. This with fiber paper is for a two minute developing time. With RC paper is a one minute developing time at room temperature. So just look and see how you need to dilute your developer and what time it calls for depending on whether you're using RC or fiber. I'm going to set for two minutes, slip it in, and then just rock the tray gently. Just lift a corner, maybe the other corner, and just swish that back and forth for the entire development time. You can see that the image is already coming up. We are not going to try to make any sort of judgment as for the correct contrast or exposure while the lights are out. There's really no point. Under these safe lights, you can't really see where the blacks have gotten or how bright the highlights are. You'll have to wait until all the way through the process and judge it under white light. And we're about halfway through. When we reach the two minute mark, I'm going to take this out and let it drain for the last five seconds and then put it into the stop bath. I have five seconds left. I'll drain. All right. And go in the stop bath. Make sure it's under the surface and then agitate constantly for about 30 seconds. Okay, I have about five seconds left on my timer, so I'm gonna lift and drain. And then put in the fixer. Now the fixer, depending on what kind you're using, can be anywhere from one to 10 minutes. I'm gonna set this for five, because that's really quite too long for a test strip. I'll probably only use about two. I'm going to agitate for at least the first 30 seconds, more likely the first minute with this particular fixer. This is a powdered fixer from Kodak. It's non-hardening, but it's also a very soft acting formula. So it takes 10 minutes with a fiber-based paper. If you're using something more concentrated, like Ilford's liquid concentrate, you really only fix for one minute and then you're done, uh, particularly with an RC paper, but even with fiber. What happens as you fix is it gets rid of all the non-exposed, non-developed silver salt, but it creates complex um, chemicals in the emulsion that are very difficult to get out, except through more fixing. What Ilford figured out is you can actually fix the paper in a very strong concentration uh, for only one minute because after that minute is when the complex stuff starts to develop. So if you get it out before then, then you don't have to worry about it, but you have to be very precise on your time. Kodak's is a little bit more flexible. 
Alright, let's turn on our lights. Alright, now we're going to put in the water and rinse it off. Alright, so this is rinsed for about a minute or so. With a, a test strip, that's more than enough time. We really just want to get the surface fixer off. So I'm going to put it on my squeegee board here and just squeegee the excess water off. Alright. So what we're looking for with the contact sheet is not necessarily the density of the photograph itself. We're looking at these sprocket holes right on the edge. And what we want to do is find a time where we can just barely make out the sprocket holes from the edge of the film itself. So this first time, which is two seconds, I can clearly see the sprocket holes. Uh, it's, it's really the base of the film is just a dull gray. The one after that, four seconds, I can, if I look pretty close, I can see the shape of the holes. Six seconds, there is no difference between where there is hole and where there is um, film base. So that is too long. So two, four, six seconds, four being the correct time for a contact sheet. This is a diagnostic tool. It is not meant to be a perfect print. So my contrast is too low. I'm not going to change that. If I print this, I will. But for a contact sheet, this is showing me the contrast that's actually in the film. It's also showing me if I have any over or under exposure or under or over development. So if I try to print this or expose this contact sheet for the images themselves rather than the edge of the film, I might get the wrong impression that I properly exposed or developed my film if I didn't. In this case, it's exposed fine, it's a little underdeveloped, but we're gonna to toss that and move on. All right, so what that contact sheet test strip told me is that I need to set my timer for four seconds. I'll get a full piece of paper out now and put it into the contact proofer. We'll turn the lights out and we will make the entire contact sheet at that point. All right, so let's get our paper out. This is gonna be a full sheet this time. Emulsion up to emulsion down. Press it down flat. In this case, the glass clicks into place. All right, no need for the craft phone this time. I'm not gonna cover anything up. I'm just going to expose the entire sheet of paper to the four second timer. So let's turn the larger on. Close. Turn that off so you can hear me, and let's process. All right, set this in two minutes. to curl so sometimes I will flip it over make sure it gets saturated both sides and here's my image all right we've got about five seconds left and we'll drain Stop bath. About 30 seconds. Five seconds left, so we'll drain. And then the fixer. We'll set the timer for five minutes. All 
All right, so my five minutes is just about come to an end. I'm gonna drain this, put in the tub of water for just a few minutes, or actually just a few seconds, and rinse it off. Turn that water on. Okay, so this has washed for a couple of minutes and gotten the bulk of the fixer off the surface. Let's just squeegee the excess off. Now let's take a look. All right, so I've got my contact sheet. I can see my entire roll of film. Um, I'm not so interested in whether or not these are properly exposed individual prints. Just can I still barely make out the, the um, sprocket holes, which that's exactly where I'm at. I can just see them if I look pretty hard. Um, my exposure is pretty consistent, but it was even lighting and uh, didn't have to vary anything. If I had one or two that were grossly over or underexposed, I wouldn't try to expose the contact sheet for that. Even if the whole roll was, I might make a second one there where I did, but I would still make one just like this because I want to make sure that what I've got actually has uh, the tools to tell me, did I expose my film properly? Is it over or underexposed, over or underdeveloped? This is fine. So this needs to wash, since I don't have a tray of HypoClear set up, this needs to wash in running water for at least an hour. If you want to cut that down in time, since this is fiber paper, you would need to use a HypoClearing agent. Then you can wash it for about 30 minutes. If this were RC paper, you could wash this for about five. So make sure what kind you're using. Since this is fiber, we're going to put it back in the wash and leave it for an hour. All right, my contact sheet has finished washing. It's taken an hour, but it's clean. So now I'm going to squeegee it off, uh, just get rid of the excess water. I'm not going to use the same squeegee board. That one is contaminated with fixer from the test strips. I'm also not going to use the same squeegee. I have one labeled for proofs and one labeled for washed. Again, you don't want any cross-contamination. Once this is squeegeed, I'm going to put it on some drying screens that I have underneath my sink. Alternative to that, you can just hang it up to dry. Because this is fiber, it's going to want to curl. So if you hang it up, put a um, clip at the top corner, clip on the bottom corner to weigh it down. A screen is still going to curl a little bit, being face down, it won't be too bad. So that's the entire process. Use this to uh, check what kind of images turned out on your roll of film, as well as how your exposures and development went on your roll of film. And that should give you all the tools that you need in order to choose which one you want to make your, your next print from. So thank you for watching and please comment like and subscribe.